welcome to Sticky to Creations 2, where we explore and retell some abandoned and unfinished products. This time, with work from Full Medios. We're going to be starting off with the abandoned click review, first conceived in 2009, never finished. It's only limited to an introduction. That's what we'll be reading. fucking internet. By the standards of the broader film community, Click 2006 is not classified as a beloved comedy classic, which represents the middle point of Adam Sandler's experimentation with more serious roles by including a clever fusion of comedy and dramatic tale of self-destruction, which it provides insight and perspective into the characters typically portrayed by Sandler. Click should have earned its place in cinematic canon, being a subversion of years of expectations built around this legendary comedy actor, which are still falsely believed to this day. Watch Red Letter Media video Sandler series and garner quotes and complaints, then display any comments on Sandler's career from reviewers, both professional and user. These in instances are intended to place Sandler in your mind as how he has been evaluated generally. This, has respon this response has resulted in many of his movies being critically overlooked and misunderstood. A recent example being Hubie Halloween, where the slightest bit of context embarrasses critics like Brian Tellerico from RogerEbert.com, who in 750 words manages to recount the plot to the audience, compare and make reference to other films, and complain about pacing. He expertly identifies isolated elements of the film without building any argument, which isn't explained until the last paragraph where he summarizes it as entertaining enough to be harmless while also being the kind of movie people will have trouble remembering exists. This could have been the whole review, as there is almost zero value to the rest of his piece. It boils down to any San Lovers links and the film's broader allegory for Sandler's career is completely passing him by. Not having good takes is Brian's specialty. But I digress. This is better explained on my letterbox. Very basic box review of how Hubie Halloween. This was all in order to make a point about the quality of Sandler criticism. It is normally very basic and has created a stigma around any of his releases. Hubie Halloween is a great example of this, and setting this up is essentially justification for my opposition to some criticisms made on Click, which will be mainly covered in the analysis of Act 2's finish. It is important to clear up any pre preconceptions of Sandler or Click before this review begins, as too many perspectives are tainted by the stigma, and it often makes it difficult to communicate on the subject. And that was the end of the introduction for the abandoned Click review. Branching into the beginnings of tw the 2010 era, there was a content deficit between both channels. And in a hope to provide extra content and, uh, and imagination, um, Brigadier 12 and Morpheus Charge uh, got together and started working on a collaboration video. Um, this follows uh, numerous characters and um, very uh, across many genres, including uh, hyper-violent sex, guns killing, uh, detective noir, and uh, inspirations but from the works of uh, Glipnorp and uh, Easter. <clears throat> I, will, I will read out part one of this script and uh, the, the rest of uh, the, uh, the, the rest of the uh, pre-production uh, I can leave up to your imagination, dear viewer. <clears throat> part one. Scene 1. Opens on a black screen, rustling and struggling noises are sort of distant and there is an organic ambience behind it, before a voice cuts through. Unknown 1. Why'd we even have to take them out this far anyway? Unknown 2. No one else has clay as pale as this. Blood stands out far better this way. Hope you're ready to make a scene. Unknown 1. Well, let's get down to it then. A hail of bullets ring out, 
Muffled screams can penetrate the canvas masks which the characters are hooded behind. Bodies slump to the ground and two pairs of feet scamper off before the scene goes quiet. A drone fades in and the title card appears soon, after with the subtitle reading by Dimsich and Brick Eater. Scene 2. The droning hollow sound from continues from the last scene, and this one opens on an extreme zoom outshot of the crater, where multiple people have were murdered. This is accompanied by political radio chatter, which for foreshadows or talks about the future of politics in the context of the universe, meaning the present and his recent downturn could be of some sort of debate about the change needed be needed for future. This is along with the driving of a car sound effect. As this is going on, the camera cuts to different shots getting closer to the scene of the crime. It is a mess of blood and bodies which stand out on the pale white clay which lines the crater. There is yellow police tape to surround the scene. With the chatter and driving still going on, the camera cuts to the inside of the car, which where there's where the, this sound is implied to be coming from. Sitting in the driver's seat is Stephen, and the other is R. Jorg, the protagonist. They sit in silence, awkwardly, as the radio plays out and arrive. At the scene, they both get out of the car, and the radio cuts along with the car. They both look at the pile of bodies, which is in the foreground, and the two stand behind out of focus. George. You ever seen anything like this, Steve? Steve ignores him and starts questioning police already at the scene. George walks off, and he approaches the pile. A more detailed shot pans over the viscera, showing bodies riddled with bullets and blood staining every piece of clothing. It appears to blend into itself, before Steve grabs him by the shoulder and pulls him aside. Steve, listen, before we get anything productive done, you need to talk to the commissioner, you know, how pedantic she is about these sort of things. George, I'm not going to sit here and let and listen to your bullshit, Steve. Tell me how to do my job one more time and I'll kill you. All right, Steve? I got a, about half a dozen citizens were murdered last night, Steve, and I'm not going to sit here and listen to you. It is just unacceptable for me to fucking listen to your Jewish ass talk about things that don't matter right now. We don't need to listen to the commissioner. He's an invalid source of moral integrity. Steve. You know what? You're right. Ever since that time I was at the gender reveal party, I've just been on the edge of George. You, you know, you know, you know how I'm jealous of you and your wife. You, you just kind of, you, like, you know, I, I'm an ugly dude and I have a lot of weight and, and you know how women are these days. Uh, they don't, they're not going to go out with these ugly men because that's all women are. They just, they just want to go out with the hot men and they're not pretty sure Men like me are, are way more on the average uglier. If you look at hyper George. Agreed. Let's just focus on the case at hand. George walks towards the dead bodies and plunges a hand into the viscera. Steve looks at him in horror, and as he fumbles through the dead bodies and gore, loud squelching noises can be heard. He raises a hand from the debris and stares at him. He walks to the police commissioner and slaps her in the face with a bloody hand. Scene 3. The camera cuts to Michael Newman and Wilmice smoking the Z in a hazy room as George enters from the side. Shattered glass and substances litter the room as George slinks into the couch with the two. George. Any of you fellows want to hit the undergrounder? Newman turns in excitement as Wilmice slumps over dead on the couch. The two living ones walk out the door, walk down a flight of stairs, and enter the streets which are dark and busy. They enter a building and subsequently an elevator. Newman. What are you coming back here for? Didn't you get banned in 03? George. Yeah, I think that, you know, my bastard commissioner got me, got pissed at me for some reason and I need to solve this rit uh, ritualistic killing case in order to keep my job. Newman. Yeah. I could help you now. I uh, watched CSI the other week, and I really think- George, I don't like you, Newman. Please stop talking to me. Newman goes silent and turns away as the elevator reaches its destination below the ground. They enter the undergrounder, a bar that is lit entirely orange and has a wallpaper consisting 
of eyes that appear to be ever staring. There is a light ambience of people talking and drinking as they enter. Newman goes and faces one of the walls, looking intensely at the wallpaper, while George approaches a wheelchair that contains the Dumasich computer face resting on its seat. Dubasich computer is po very poorly animated, with one note facial expressions and mouth moving in an unfluid and slow frame rate pace. Dumasich bot it Dumasich computer in a robot scented voice. Since I've thoroughly examined the facts of this case, I've concluded that the most logical course of action is for you to visit the New Town Lounge. From my enormous database, I have compiled the primary suspects in this case, who are typically regarded as slime and villainy. Using your Bluetooth device, I've loaded Google Maps onto your screen. The, re the majority of the suspects are Italian mobsters. However, there are few fascinating individuals who have mutations and unique powers. Your computer goes full screen into the various faces of the subjects and descriptions will be read aloud in the film. Dubasich Macintosh. The first suspect is defamed bank robber, money-hungry Ricardo Fernando. His alias is The Money Man. He is involved with numerous cartels and human infant trafficking. Dumasich Macintosh. His brother, Al Fagileo. Sorry. Al Fagileo, the owner of the Newtown Lounge. He is notorious for his connections to the bank, robbing industry, and corrupting the men in blue to act in criminal activity. Newman interrupts. Wanna smoke? Doom Sitch and Tosh. I stopped smoking in 03. Thanks, nonetheless. George. Alright, dude. No problem. George trips Newman as he walks away. That is the end of this reading out of a scrapped project uh, constructed by the, by both minds of a very talented uh, and less so talented uh, Morpheus. Um, the, uh, some overall comments on commentary on this is uh, it was it was a good project, but uh, doing animation for this um, caused budgety budgetary constraints uh, for the studio, so they had to scrap this uh, this script. So. Um, yeah, that was part one. Thanks. Now this next one is actually a bit of a freebie for Wendigoon. We're going to explain the entire timeline of the Simonic documents for free. Um, this was actually constructed by Father Felix, very detailed and very well researched. So you're going to want to you're going to want to pay attention to this one. The timeline starts off on. 23rd of December, 1803, so this is when Simon's dad kills him and and his mom because he's trying to be a Sigma. We know this from the Brickia video. And then we go for a bit of a time skip to 1864 when Simon has returned as a demon and infiltrated Birdmode's family and pretended to be Birdmode's brother. Obviously, we know this from um, the Birdmode video. This is this one's pretty straightforward. And then, again, we go forward a bit into 1887 when Simon hijacks the TV to tell his father that he followed him to Australia and the couple in the video aren't real. They're actually Simon pretending to be them and the house isn't the American house, but it's Simon's dad's house. And the insides are seen in the bird mode video, but obviously this is all explained in the Father Felix video. If you watched that, you would know. Um, and then, again in 1887, just a day later, Simon called his brother Bird Mode just after he leaves for Australia, so his disappearance would be seen as his death because he needed an alibi so people wouldn't be suspicious of him because he's going to go kidnap his father and torture him in a facility. So this is all explained in the first half of Bird Mode's video. The next... The next point in the timeline is actually 1889 on the 8th of December Simon is now in Australia at his dad's house after faking his second death so remember he faked his first death 
but this time he's faked his second death in America to bird mode. So he's kidnapped his father now, and it took Simon two years to find his father as he is a child and doesn't know what he's doing. This is all in the second half of the bird mode here. If Wendigoon was watching this, he'd probably be noting this down, but I don't know if he... I don't know if he picked that one up. That's a bit of a more obscure detail. Then we skip 125 years into the future, where Simon's father has been in a facility and tortured for 125 years. This is the whole... This is like the whole crux of the Morpheus video. Basically, the whole time in the Morpheus video, it's just that. And then... Again in 2014, just a day later, he gets taken to the second setting and chased into the woods, which is actually the second half uh, of Father Felix's video. So obviously, in the upcoming videos, we're going to be ad addressing that Simon's dad is actually a demon too. He dies somewhere between 1803 and 1964. So a pretty specific time period, those like 161 years pretty pretty concise and then he comes back as a demon but due to the traumatic way he died he doesn't remember dying and still thinks he's alive he was also very paranoid after killing simon and simon haunted him in his dreams that's obviously why he moved to australia now here are some really pressing questions that father felix has posed he said who collected this audio and footage I collected the audio and footage also. I did that. Both of them. All of them were collected by me. Why did they do this? To document haunting, haunting and ghoulish things happening in the Simonic franchise. And also, they wanted to, the world to know that their true monster was Simon. What has happened to Simon's father at the end of the Father Felix video? That's really... A lot of people are wondering that. Um, we're going to say he killed every Simon in the timeline. There's so many other questions too. What will Bird Mode do about his brother? And who is Father Felix? And what is his part in this situation? And of course, what will happen next? So these are all the questions that are posed by it. And I'm not giving everything away for free. You're going to have to figure that one out for yourself, Wendigoon, because I know that that's going to happen. For the final piece, we have procured a piece of theatre produced by Issa before his death. This was actually meant to be a stage play, but it was never made because he died. <clears throat> Act 1, Scene 3. Make business and quo receive a prophecy from liberal arts students. Enter quo and McBusiness. McBusiness. Why do we have to go to this university fair? I don't care about all these poor high hippies. Isn't a quote. Because we have to sell our high premium finance packages to those reckless young people. Mac, Mac business. But look at all these libtards, like those over there. Are they girls or boys? I honestly can't tell. Enter liberal arts students. Liberal arts students won. Hey, we can hear you. Mac Business of Scotland Finance Incorporated. Mac Business. What? How do you, a lowly undergrad student, know the name of me, Mac Business Griffin, the assistant CFO of one of the biggest financing firms in all the Highlands? Liberal arts students too. We know everything and nothing. Liberal arts students three. We don't know, for example, anything about the stock market. Liberal Arts Students 1. But we do know that you will take the role of CFO at your company. Liberal Arts Students 2. And then CEO hereafter. Is that quote? What are you talking about, you left-wing stoner scumbag? You'll never be CEO, not with this track record. Liberal Arts Students 3. And you, Bizniquo, you will not be promoted, but your son will become CEO of all of Britain. Quote. The ramblings of the utter deranged. My son is three years old and McBusiness will never become CEO. I, it would go to Disney's son in law, malbusiness. Liberal arts student one asked. Liberal arts students disappear. 
the business division's phone starts to ring. Mac business divisions and Hello? Yeah. Oh no, what happened? Busted for tax fraud? I'm the new CFO and as his replacement until we can find another person? Gee, thanks! Biznikro, you'll never believe what happened. The previous CV CFO got busted for tax fraud, and now I'm the acting CFO. Biznikro. Oh crud, then I better get home to change my income information. Biznikro leaves. Mac Just like those uni students said, maybe I should give some thought to becoming a CEO, or at least getting back on some LSD. Exit McBusiness. Act 2, Scene 1. In this scene, McBusiness is gonna see a floating platinum credit card. This McQuo is chilling. Enter McBusiness. This McQuo. Who's there? McBusiness. It's your boy, Chill. This McQuo. I know. Well, Dunsonus really made, really seemed to enjoy that dinner you put on for him. Says he's gonna give the janitors a raise. Also, last night I dreamed about those stoner LSD addicted Joan Rogan DMT user liberal art students. Kinda scoffed how their prediction actually came true for you, right? Mac business. Nah, I don't think about them. But potentially. If you help me to become CEO by some means, I'll purchase you the nicest items with company funds. Unquote. If you become CEO, I'll gladly stick with you. So long as it's not by sabotaging the business, he's a decent CEO, and I wouldn't want to get up, get caught up in some dubious crimes. And Quo leaves. What is that? No way. Is that an Apple Inc. refined platinum credit card? What is this? I I, I can't grab it. This this is impossible. Could this be some new nuts technology? Either that or it's a hallucination theory induced by the Joe Rogan DMT. I was in fact planning to use this exact kind of card to frame Dusnesis and make the extravagant purchases once I become CEO. This card is traveling to where I'm gonna go to ready. My eyes must be dysfunctional. Or maybe my eyes do work and my sense of touch doesn't. How interesting. But if I'm going to be honest with myself, there is no credit card here and the crime which I am about to commit is causing me to hallucinate the card, the fruits of my labor. But the more I stay here and talk, and the talk, the less I want to go through with my plan. Act 2, Scene 2. The business gets set up for Epstein Island. Lady McBusiness. Damn, these fine wines are crazy. So much so that I've drugged up this business bodyguards and punctured the tires of his limo. The bodyguards are minimum wage, so it doesn't matter if they die from drugs. Enter with business. Mac business. Who's there? Lady Mac business. I tried to put Dunisness's name in the Jeffrey Epstein flight logs earlier, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. I could have done it, but his computer password was kind of similar to my dad's, so I felt bad about it. Mac business. Never mind. I already did it. Put his name in my, on my flight logs. On, on the flight logs. Sent out some emails like, Hey Jeffrey, I really enjoyed my time on the island. Thanks, man. I was also a big fan of all the tax evading and fraud which we partook in while on the island. This will annihilate his approval. He's gonna get kicked out of the company to prevent public outrage, increase PR and whatnot. Did you hear anything? Lady Mech Business. Just some birds as he came down. <laughs> Macbeth. <laughs> Two janitors were nearby and shouted fraud and they laughed about it. But when they said business bless us, it couldn't say a businessman. I don't know why. I need to I needed to bless the business gods, but I couldn't. Lady Macbeth. Just don't think about it, it'll drive you mad. Act 3, scene 1. Like business decides to frame Biznikwo. Ah, Biznikwo thinking about business. Look at you, McBusiness, you got it all. 
the CEO of Scotland Finance Incorporated, just like those weird liberal arts students promised you. I suspect that you be- that you cheated to get that position. Do you understand the sacrifices I have made to get here, and now you become the chief executive of the instantly? It's madness! But now, it was also prophesied that the position would not go to your maggot children, and that my sons and grandsons would be CEOs and CFOs instead. If those millennials tell the truth, which they did about you, maybe what they said about me will come true too. But shh! I'll shut up now. Apple Bottom Jeans plays as McBusiness enters dressed as the new CEO, and Lady McBusiness enters dressed as the executive secretary, together with Lenny Rodney, businessmen, assistants, and their attendants. Mac business indicating business quo. And look here, the most important business guy at this gathering. Lady Mac business. If we forgot him, our big celebration wouldn't be complete. And that wouldn't be any good. He has such a great sense of humor. Mac business to business quo. Tonight we're going tonight we're having a party and we're going to get crunk. And it's good. And if it's good with you, bro, I want you to be there with us. Whatever your wealthiness commands me to do, it is always my duty to do it. Mac business in private. In order for me to succeed, I'll frame business quo to get further and not allow his prophecy to become true. Act 4, scene 2. Lady McDizness. How could McDizness do this? First he frames the Disnesses and flees the country. How could he abandon his wife and kids? Rodney. I'm sorry. I don't know if he's being smart or being scared. Lady McDizness. Wisdom? He's left us and his child to who knows where. It's all fear. Son. Son. <clears throat> Son. Was my father a traitor, mummy? Lady McDizness. Yes. Lawyer enters. Lawyer. I've come to sue you and your son. Lawyer sues son. Son. He has sued me, mother! Run away before he sues you, too! Son files for bankruptcy. Act 5, scene that. 8. The one where McBusiness gets caught by Malbusiness. Malbusiness. It's over, MacBusters! Your missus has already confessed to helping you frame Duncan. Is Nikwo? And they have the evidence of you being on Epstein Island. Just come down from the roof and we can at least save the company from humiliation. Stocks have already fallen by 8%. Mac business. No. I'll never go quietly. The FBI will kill me when I get in jail, as I can place high-profile individuals on the island. It's all over for me, Mal business. Mal business. Oh, don't jump! Mac business jumps off the building and goes flat on the ground. Mal business. At least he died doing what he loved. Play ends. This marks the end of Sticky to 12 Creations 2. Thank you for experiencing it with us. And remember, the way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you gotta put up with the rain. Life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. You will face many defeats in life, but never let yourself be defeated. You're wonderful. Start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. All we have is now. Believe, and, you, and you're already halfway there. There's always light. If only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. Intellectual growth should commence at birth and cease only at death how we live is what makes us real nothing in doing what you like but in liking what you do is the secret of happiness and finally nothing is impossible the word itself is i'm possible